Okay, we'll get this, let's get this started. My name is Harold Lavender. I'm the president of the New, New Mexico, University of New Mexico Alumni Association. And on behalf of the association, I'd like to welcome each of you here. As I know most of you are aware, uh, terrible tragedy yesterday for one of our board members of the Alumni Association, Jennifer Reardon. And I um, want to make sure that you keep her in your thoughts and prayers, if you would, and her, her, keep her family in your thoughts and prayers. Um, it was a real tragedy and um, one that uh, a significant number of us have felt very personally because she uh, kind of embodied everything that you want to embody. And she loved being on this board and loved being a part of it. So it, uh, not to start it off with a maudlin part of it, but I, if you could keep her family in your prayers and what thoughts, that'd be wonderful. Um, uh, we, this is a really fun event. Duffy Swan had the idea, I don't know, we're talking about four years ago? I'm about right there. About four years ago, Duffy Swan had the idea that this, we, we had so many neat things happening at the University of New Mexico, so many neat people that we ought to talk about and be able to focus on. And he said, let's start something that will allow us to showcase this university. And We've had a number of really interesting programs up to now, and this is just another in that series. It's really exciting to be here at the Rainforest. I think that uh, you're going to really enjoy this program tonight. For those of you who get to stick around, and I didn't ask this earlier, are they, are they going to get to see some of the rooms? Think back, and I'm looking at this crowd, and many of you are younger than I am, uh, significantly younger than I am, but many of you may be close to my age. I want you to think back to what your college dorm room looked like. I want you to remember that. And when you see the rooms here, I, I, had it been this way when I was in school, I'd have lived here. I would have, I'd have figured out, I'd have taken a class or something so I could stay. You wait. I mean, you, I'm telling you, washer and dryer, separate bedrooms, kitchen. I mean, way past anything I saw. I lived at, uh, in Mesa Vista for a while. And uh, that was about eight feet by eight feet. So, you know, there you go. Anyway, I think that you're, you're in for some real treats tonight. And uh, Rob and his folks are going to really uh, have fun showing everybody and talking to everyone. I want to uh, make a couple of introductions. Uh, I don't, we don't typically do the uh, long-winded, uh, we're welcoming everybody here, but two in particular. Um, Senator Jerry Ortiz Pino, I just want to say thank you for being here tonight. He's had our, he's, 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 he's been one of New Mexico, the University of New Mexico's most staunch and great supporters at the legislature in Santa Fe, and thank you for everything you've done for us. We also have the chairwoman of the STC board, and she's here tonight, and she sits on the executive committee of the Alumni Association, Sandra Begay. So there are a lot of other celebrities in the room, but we're going to leave it at that for now. If I... Uh, if, well, I actually was at an event a while back that was actually really funny. If you feel that I've slighted you by not introducing you, stand up right now and let me know who you are. No, I, <laughs> I thought that was, a, that was really a fun, that was actually a really fun introduction. Um, what we've got tonight is uh, uh, a wonderful program. I'll come back up here again in a minute. We've got a couple of prizes to give away, a couple of gifts to give away. I'd like to introduce you now to Lisa Kudala, who is the CEO and Chief Economic Development Officer of the STC. She's going to tell you a little bit about herself and, and have an opportunity to speak to you tonight. So, Lisa. Thank you, Harold, and, and welcome everyone to the Rainforest tonight. We're thrilled to have you here. And uh, as several of us who uh, live in this building, uh, welcome to our living room, which is the middle of the building here. We have a big living room, so we welcome you all. Um, my role at STC is to head up the University of New Mexico's technology transfer and economic development efforts. So what does that mean? We commercialize the research results that come from the university and in particular help to start new companies. Part of this building, the design of it, was a specific focus on homes for our startup companies. And if you take a tour this evening, you'll see that we have offices, we have co-working space for our startup companies. In my role as the university's chief economic development officer, I work, our signature project has been this, this uh, site, the Innovate ABQ project, and this building, the Lobo Rainforest. So I know Rob is gonna talk to you about how the building operates in a, in a bit. Um, I want to maybe just give you a bit of history. So how did we get here? So in 2012, when Bob Frank was president of the university, 
we talked about how to build an innovation uh, district here in Albuquerque, knowing that the many startups that were being formulated um, really did not have a natural home. We were advised by a firm called Perkins and Will, who helped us lay out a master plan, helped us identify this site to purchase, and the university formed a separate corporation called Innovate ABQ. So this first building was the university's effort to energize the site. And it is really unique, including the tenants that you'll hear about tonight, as well as students at the university. So um, what does the rainforest mean? The rainforest came about because of a book written in 2012. And this book really de de defines how to build an innovation ecosystem which suits New Mexico particularly well. We're a small population state. We work well together. We kind of figure out things bottom up. And entrepreneurs in this rainforest environment can work together very fluidly. So the piece in involving Rob, who will be your, your main speaker tonight, um, was the university's thought that, yes, we're commercializing research results that come from the university, and that is all fine and good, but we weren't as effective in, in encouraging student entrepreneurship. So what this building is, is the collaboration among the research institutions, AFRL, Sandia, UNM, as well as the students here. It's a very rich environment. I joined STC in 2003, and I've been here about 15 years now. My own background is in engineering. I'm trained as an engineer and worked, started in technology transfer a very long time ago, 1982, at Stanford University and really learned the discipline um, at Stanford. I've also worked for um, Iowa State University, University of Georgia, and Purdue before joining. So I find that our environment to be such a welcoming ecosystem for building startups, for working together to uh, collaborate uh, both in research as well as the commercialization. So we're thrilled to showcase all of that to you tonight and thank you for being here. Thank you. We're gonna do this a little bit differently now. Uh, we'll make this, we're gonna do all of the Stuff you, some of the stuff you might do after the performance, which I'm calling Rob's presentation, <laughs> um, because after the performance, what we're going to do is divide into third to three groups. Where you're each of each group will have a guide, and if you can keep stay seated after Rob gives his remarks, we'll divide the room up, and you'll get your guide, and then hit the road and see everything is here to offer. Okay, I think did I say that right, Sue? Okay, she's, she's the one who's directing what I'm doing here. Uh, we've, got some, we've got a couple of some gift drawings, and I had to make sure, I had to make sure that uh, I knew which was which, and the reason for that is there's two books in here, and one of the, uh, I don't have to give something away. One of these gifts is going to be for Rob. It, it's going to be some, some swag and stuff, but one of the reasons I'm not, I had to make sure I had the right buy, bag is one of the prizes here is one of his books. So we didn't want to have to, we, we, we didn't want to give that to you. We, we, you, <laughs> you got it. So what I'd like to do, how many of them are going to be for a, a couple of gift bags? Number 257, uh, 257, Victoria. You received a number when you got her, you just don't know no. that. No, Jimmy Temple. What? Right here, come on, come on up. Is that what they say on that show on TV? Come on up. Come on down. Congrats, that's great. It's nice to have you here. Thank you. There you go. You got it. One more. Okay? I'll do this. Let's see if we can find it. Oh, okay. This. Okay. Okay. 51. Kevin? Oh, here we go. Okay. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay. We now, gonna, we're going to do the business card drawing. And the business card drawing is this bag. I'm not even going to do it this. I'm going to do it for <laughs> <laughs> Try this one. Moses Dunn Farmer and Tuttle, Alicia Gutierrez. 
Well, come on up. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for being here tonight. And now we have a couple of gifts for Rob and for his able assistant. And uh, we're going to give them to you now. I, I'll deliver this to you. Uh, we're going to give this to you now because at the end it's going to be a little bit of a hug -up. So okay. you better, better do a really good job tonight. Because the whole deal is if, I don't, if, it's, if it's not good, I get to take it back. And T Tiffany Porter, would, is Tiffany, would you come forward, please? And if I, if I understand correctly, Tiffany is the program manager. Is that correct? And we've got a little gift for you as well. Thank you. So thank you. Okay, that takes care of a lot of that part of it. Now we get to the reason we're all here. Um, when, I, when I did the introduction for Hakeem Bellamy at a previous Lobo living room, uh, I used a method for introducing him that he told me afterwards was the neatest one he'd ever had. I'm assuming each of you has a program. Is that a reasonable assumption? Yeah. I'm also assuming that most of you can read. And so I'm going to leave that assumption. You don't have to answer that one. So instead of me reading this, what I'm going to say is, we're going to get to hear from Rob Del Campo. Here's what he does and where he's been. Come and talk to us. I was slightly nervous. If you've met Harold, you should be. OK. Thanks for coming out this evening. Uh, my name is Rob Del Campo. I'm the uh, director of the Innovation Academy. Uh, as well as the Dean of University College and a professor in the uh, Anderson School of Management. Uh, and I've been at this UNM thing for a long time. Uh, I am an uh, alumnus, as you can see there. I'm just read you my bio. You know, I did exactly what Harold asked you to do. Uh, but I've been to a couple of these Lobo Living Room events, so we're happy to be here and to chat. Uh, I'm glad you got to hear from Lisa as well. STC.UNM really are the folks who brought everything together down here on the site. Uh, at Innovate ABQ uh, and really are the leaders in what's going on here. And we're super supportive to Innovation Academy when we had no money and no support and nothing else. And we're the ones that really helped us. So there are our wonderful partners that we, we couldn't do without. Uh, our whole idea is that we start students in the Innovation Academy. We get them acclimated to innovation, creativity, entrepreneurship. Hopefully they develop some wonderful product or business or invent something cool. And then we move them over to STC and we start pulling in the cash. That's what we're shooting for. <laughs> so the Lobo Rainforest, as Lisa alluded to, the whole idea here comes from a book by uh, Victor Wong. And you see the rules of the rainforest back there. Um, <clears throat> if, you, if you get a chance to go take a look at it, we had a very talented individual paint those for us. Um, and it talks about the rainforest. If you read this book, uh, it talks about the idea of this sort of startup ecosystems and these communities and such. And that's really what this idea was for this particular building. We were sitting around a table and trying to decide what we came up with. And I think Lisa actually is the one who said, well, we should call it the rainforest, like in the book. And he said, OK, sure, sounds good. And that's how buildings get named at UNM. People, <laughs> people just kind of throw something out. And if no one objects, that's what happens. But there's some confusion always between what's Innovate ABQ, what's the rainforest, what's UNM, what's this other thing. What's all so the entire seven acre campus that you parked on earlier and includes the Fuse Maker Space over there, as well as the old Baptist Church here, is the Innovate ABQ site. And in about 2015, uh, a development partner was selected, uh, that was uh, Signet Development, to put this UNM piece together uh, and really be the first <coughs> cornerstone partner in this Innovate ABQ deal as to what's going on. We were the first ones in. We said, hey, this is a great idea. Let's get on board and let's build a facility and let's let's make that happen. And that was really before I came on board. Um, that really where things were were moving in terms of innovation. And so this is phase one for the the master development. Now you can see this particular drawing and rendering, and we have some other ones up here. And there are various ideas from the Perkins and Will folks that Lisa alluded to as to what this site would look like. And the whole idea was that this would be the center for. Albuquerque, but moreover, New Mexico, to really kickstart economic development. So you may have heard a lot about this in the city or at the state level, and even somewhat at the federal level. The whole idea behind how we're going to develop uh, economically is through entrepreneurship, small business, microenterprise, those sorts of things. We're not going to have Ford Motor Company show up and build a huge plant down here, employ everyone making $100,000 a year. 
We need to do it through our small business economy, which is really what New Mexico has been for many, many years. So the way it's kind of looked, it's a hub for what happens. There'd be multiple buildings and multiple phases and multiple things going on on this site as really the epicenter of what's going on in Albuquerque and the state of New Mexico. <clears throat> the first phase here is the uh, Lobo Rainforest Building, which you will get to tour later on. And we have some great tenants and partners um, that have really worked with us over the time we've been here, we've been open since August, and even before that in terms of investing in what's going on here. But I think you can be proud, being associated with the University of New Mexico, that we were really the people to put our foot out first and make a statement and have a footprint in this area in terms of Innovate ABQ. You see some early renderings and some pictures as to what uh, was going on here. The building was designed by Decker Parrish Sabatini, uh, Signet was the developer, and then Jane's Construction obviously did a wonderful job of putting this together and was very um, um, able to accommodate us asking them almost every other day for a tour of the site or take us here or take us there or whatever. So it was, it was very great and we we're very excited to, to have the facility. The layout of the first floor here, which is really the commercial presence here. The top five floors are all student residences. As Harold mentioned, they are like no dorms you have ever seen and you will have an opportunity to go check them out in just a little bit. Uh, but the whole idea here, and even you can tell in the architecture and the way it was built, is to have a lot of free flowing space and place for people to interact and just like this in our living room, hang out, meet, talk, exchange ideas, etc. There are a lot of universities around the country who have this idea of student living, learning, entrepreneurship. But nowhere else do we have these partnerships with private industry or public entities as, as you'll see. So nowhere else in the country do we have a facility like this where you have uh, an academic program, Innovation Academy, the University Tech Transfer Office, which we see a lot of those relationships, and as I mentioned, it's very important to us. But the key difference here are other partners that are tenants, and you'll get a chance to visit their space and hear what they do on site in just a little bit. We have Air Force Research Lab, who has a beautiful suite across one of the um, courtyards here and their tech engagement office is located here. They were the first people to sign on to be a tenant here at the site. And it's really a revolutionary sort of concept and they have to give them a lot of credit that they got the ball rolling in terms of people being on site here. Uh, being outside the gate, having a place where they can meet with people without going through the ridiculous process of badging and such. If you've ever been on base, it takes a long time. You gotta show up at 7 a.m. for a 9.30 meeting. Right? So this is an easy place for that to happen and we can interact with them and we work on programs together and it's a great place for that sort of thing to happen. They were so visionary in this process that they actually even signed on and went to the media and said they would be a tenant here before there were even lease agreements in place. So that was a pretty, pretty good movement by them to make that happen. Uh, also um, in the space we have Sandia National Labs, C3, the Center for Collaboration and Commercialization over in the corner, you get to see that. Our other national laboratory, they thought it was very important, got to have a, a place outside the gates, um, outside the fences to be able to interact with people, to work on commercialization, to be down here with STC and with Air Force Research Lab. And then we had the opportunity for uh, General Atomics to have their first presence in the state of New Mexico on site as well. And it was a late developing opportunity, but luckily the university was adaptable, which is not very common. I don't know if you've heard about the university ever. Right? <laughs> and seize the opportunity for them to have a presence in this building as well. Uh, their goal is to work very closely with both the Air Force and Sandia uh, to provide some contracting services and all those other sorts of things. You'll get a chance to visit with them. Economic development opportunity, never had an office in the state, and now they have a presence here and at the rainforest, very important. So that's very exciting. On the other side, you can see the student side, and that's this long piece over here of the sort of upside down three as how the building looks. And that is made up of uh, student residents, sort of back office type stuff, your RA desk. You know, they see you stumbling in at night, having too much to drink and making sure you're okay and get to your room and that sort of thing. Also have your mailboxes and that sort of deal. And then on the other side, Nusenda Credit Union, one of the cornerstone partners in the Innovate ABQ partnership, has their, res their, uh, their presence as well. So they've got a little uh, virtual teller type thing over there where you stick your ATM card in and you talk to someone via video who's I thought they were in Uptown, but I guess the Nusenda guy told me they're actually on the west side. 
Um, they take your deposits and do all that kind of thing. And they also have a cafe called The Press Room that's over there, which is very important. Have to get our daily caffeination from them. Um, and this place wouldn't work without that opportunity. So <clears throat> that makes up our ecosystem on the first floor. And then we've got space for 310 crazy students to live upstairs. And where do they live? They live in these apartments. That, that's not the greatest 3D rendering, but they've got a really cool space where they have their own bedroom, their own bathroom. They share a kitchen and a living room, uh, a washer and dryer. Um, they've got some open spaces for them to hang out in. What I didn't realize was a big deal for them, but they think is the coolest thing ever is there are doorbells on each of the uh, apartments, and you'll get to see those a little bit later. We have, like I said, 310 spaces upstairs, RAs on each floor. A couple of the RAs will be helping us out this evening and be able to answer all your questions and tell you all the war stories about what's gone on in the first year here at the Rainforest. And there have been some interesting things. Uh, <clears throat> there is space, there's a gym up there, there's a beautiful patio that they can utilize, and we have these courtyards as well. We have the one with the grass, which is more of the informal courtyard where people take their comfort animals, dogs and such, to relieve themselves. It's also a very popular place for some of our students to make out and do other unseemly things. <laughs> I know all this because my window opens there and we see it all day. <laughs> the other side that's more concrete with the hanging uh, light fixtures is what we call the professional courtyard, uh, which, is, which flanks the area between STC and Air Force Research Lab, so they don't have to see everybody making out all day. <laughs> That's okay, I'm not bitter. Uh, <clears throat> recently, you may have seen the partnership that we've struck with the Navajo Nation and UNM Real Estate and Housing was, was key in this relationship. Uh, so the Navajo Nation, um, in seeking out opportunities for their students, realized that while there are lots of scholarship opportunities, that housing was really a need for their folks. So there were students who are Navajo coming to UNM who would, for example, they told this story when we had the agreement signing, uh, would have classes on Tuesday and Thursday. They would drive in from Gallup, sleep on somebody's floor Tuesday night, Wednesday night, go to class Thursday and drive back, or sleep in their car, or have other sort of unstable housing opportunities. So what they did is made a tremendous investment at multiple universities, but UNM was first, to provide housing for Navajo students attending UNM. And if you didn't know, uh, UNM has the most Navajo students attending of any university uh, in the United States. And so the top two floors are leased out to students uh, that are Navajo. They present their certificate of Indian blood. We use our Indian uh, or excuse me, Native American student services to, uh, to vet that and we get them in here, moved in. They have a beautiful space to live. We had a wonderful signing ceremony with folks from the Navajo Nation, the president, vice president. They hung a Navajo flag. What is serendipitous, but I'm saying it was planned, is there's a beautiful uh, view of, uh, of Mount Hood, which is one of the sacred mountains for uh, Navajo people from the top uh, floor. So we'll take what we can get. We've had a great opportunity. Matt Taylor, I'm sorry, what did I say? Oh, I meant Mount Taylor. <laughs> That's a really long view, yes. <laughs> It's been a great collaboration already. Uh, a lot of the programming we've done down here on the first floor, things we do for students, we've had a, a tremendous response from the students uh, from the Navajo Nation on the top two floors. Uh, and we're actually looking to get even more closer uh, involved with them. We'll be teaching the introductory course in Native American studies uh, in the building in the fall. Uh, so that'll be a great opportunity for not only those students, but also just to get people more culturally aware uh, about what's going on for Native Americans uh, in the state of New Mexico and nationally. So we're really excited about that. The master plan for the site, I won't bore you with too much, but there is a lot of stuff out here. And the idea is to build multiple facilities on this same spot. Phase one is this building that you're in today. Phase two uh, is going to be the church building next door. If any of you have been around Albuquerque, maybe been inside that Baptist church, um, if you were to go in there today, it's super creepy. Uh, there is no electricity. Um, the, the, uh, the sanctuary is still pretty much intact, and we're trying to think about ways to repurpose that. But the idea is for the Innovate ABQ group, which is a, a subsidiary of the Board of Regents, as Lisa mentioned, to figure out ways to purpose that. Uh, what does that sanctuary become? How do offices fit into that space? How do we do wet labs? How do we do other sort of innovation-oriented activities in that space? 
but their plans are already moving forward to have additional facilities on site here. And there are plots that are laid out there uh, for folks to move in. So if you would like to build a one or 200,000 square foot facility in the footprint here, I can put you in touch with those people. Just let me know and you can see those have been kind of laid out. This all fits into the greater concept of the innovation corridor uh, and the idea is that the Central Africa corridor, be corridor between downtown and UNM and even going up to uh, San Diego National Labs is where innovation takes place uh, in the state of New Mexico and more specifically in Albuquerque. So a lot of other things are in the ecosystem here, Fat Pipe ABQ, uh, Free Range, um, Titan Development has their big development going across from uh, Presbyterian Hospital, which is going to be huge. But that this is where innovation happens in New Mexico, in Albuquerque, and hopefully even more broadly in the United States. Having the national laboratories, a major university, and then this kind of uh, municipally driven uh, economic development activity is really important and unique. <clears throat> so I mentioned our partners here. They're wonderful people to work with and they're wonderful groups. You would think having um, two pseudo-governmental organizations, two university organizations, and uh, a private company that no one in New Mexico has ever heard of might make for some difficult bedfellows and particularly moving money around and trying to help each other out. You would think it would be like a cruise ship in a tiny bathtub moving very small from side to side, but we make it all happen. And we're all very creative and we have uh, programming meetings monthly to think about how we can all work together and we come up with some pretty good things. What I'm gonna talk about is our program very briefly, which is the Innovation Academy, uh, which was started about two and a half years ago. Uh, and we did not have a space. We were squatting in whatever offices we could find on campus at UNM until we had the opportunity to move down here uh, in August. Uh, but what Innovation Academy is designed to do is to really be the pump primer for a lot of these other organizations. So for STC, as I mentioned, right, we're trying to create the, the CEOs for the companies that they're trying to build off of university technology in the future. Same thing with, with the Air Force. We want to help the engineers that might go to work for them think more creatively and Sandia and General Atomics as well. So what we are designed around is the concept of innovation, creativity, and entrepreneurship, and that's broadly defined. So we try to supplement the existing curriculum with ways that people can do innovation very broadly. And what is innovation? In my definition, that is a creative solution to an existing problem. So that can be anything from how do I create a clicker that actually works, right? <laughs> to, um, for example, one of our companies that one of our students has started is, um, I have to get a colonoscopy and I don't want to drink 17 jugs of Go Lightly, right? There's a variety of these problems that people might want to solve. And so we try to support students around all of those different ideas. Uh, we were given our mandate from the president and he said, hey, I need you to get 15 students in this program and we're gonna put Innovation Academy t-shirts on them and we're gonna trot them out at events and that will be a win for us. And I said, okay, well, I think I can get you 15 students. I'll try my best. And that was a couple of years ago, but we've done, done pretty well since then. So we have lots of different stuff going on. Uh, we currently have over 825 students signed up for our program that is co-curricular. So pretty good, pretty good return on investment there. But what's exciting are the demographics of these students and what they're doing. Over 50% of our students are female. Over 50% of our students are students of color. And over 65% of our students are first generation college students. So this idea of creating your own path is something that really resonates with these millennial Gen Z folks and is something that we can really capitalize on. Even more exciting is that students in the Innovation Academy represent 85 different majors at the university. Did you guys even realize there were 85 majors at the University of New Mexico? So we have everything from flamenco dancers to sociology majors to psychology majors to business majors to engineers all over. And the reality is, is that you, if you walked up and down Central and talked to every business owner there, very few of them would have a business degree. Very few of them would have a degree in the actual area where they're working, right? If they're an artisan, they might have a degree in art, they might not. But everyone can use a little bit of this. And it's not our job to make everyone learn that, but to give them access to resources and let them know what they don't know, okay? I don't know if you've met any of these kids these days, right? 
but they're tremendous self-educators and that if they don't know something, they're going to go out and find the answer to it. Um, Kyle, who I'll introduce you to in a second, uh, we got a 3D printer over here and I was like, oh, we got to learn how to use this 3D printer. So he's like, eh, YouTube, <laughs> how to use MakerBot. <laughs> Boom, 20 minutes later, he's printing stuff. So that's great, but sometimes they don't know what they don't know. So we want to provide some resources for them to help them build up what they want to do and move past that. We do a ton of different stuff. Currently, we have 36 student-run businesses that are up and running and that are legitimate businesses. These run the gamut from everything from, we've got a guy who buys basically garage sale uh, laptops, like 486 laptops. Some of the older folks know what I'm talking about there. He reconditions them, downloads all of Wikipedia onto them, and has a distribution network to send them to remote villages in Africa. So, nonprofit, great. Everything to uh, up to and including uh, our other student I mentioned before who has a product called Bubble Light where they basically can um, distribute um, colonoscopy drugs in a boba tea type environment. So you put those in any, any type of uh, beverage that you want to drink. You don't taste it and you just one small glass, that's it. Right? Uh, and everything in between. We had our pitch competition earlier this week and it's really exciting to see some of the things that the students come up with. Uh, we have one uh, young woman who has a uh, uh, dipped chocolate uh, company that she's running. Uh, we have uh, other folks that have created products for uh, parents with children. It's like a bottle um, uh, formula keeper kind of thing. We've got all sorts of different things all over the, the map. We've got apps, we've got um, uh, music production companies all over the map in terms of supporting these, these students and what they do. And some of the programs we have are, are really tremendous and really exciting. We offer classes down here. We've sponsored a create your own job fair where we brought in resources from around the community. So for entrepreneurs in the season of uh, job fairs, give them the opportunity to meet with different folks and the different resources. We sponsor our pitch competition twice a year, which is great fun. Uh, it's down at Bow and Arrow Brewery. Students do a 90 second pitch uh, on what their company is or their idea. And then we give away prizes. We give them a thousand bucks, 750 bucks, something like that. This year sponsored by Nusenda. We partner with STC on that, which we, we partner with them on almost everything. Um, <clears throat> we have a grant from the National Science Foundation. It's called our i uh, program. And we provide $3,000 for customer discovery for young companies. So maybe after you've done our pitch competition, need a little more money to get moving, we give you 3,000 bucks and we say, go talk to customers, right? We do some lean startup training and we say, what do people really want? Is this the product that you can really sell? Once they complete that, they're eligible for a $50,000 grant from the federal government as well. So that's really exciting. And there are lots of universities that have that NSF program, but what's unique to what UNM is doing is that we, so most of those NSF programs, it's you've got to have a faculty developed technology and then you get a student involved as the entrepreneur and you get a mentor and that sort of thing. But uh, when we were working with STC to develop our proposal for that program, we said, you know what, we're gonna do completely student-led projects as well. And about 40% of our projects in the first two cohorts are 100% student run. I'm also proud to say that in our first two cohorts, at least one member of every team, of every company, is uh, an underrepresented minority. So we're doing a good job in reflecting the demographics of our state and the constituents that we serve. So it's very, we do tons of different stuff. We do internship fairs. Uh, we have our two plus one plus two program, which is an exciting collaboration with CNM, where we've created a pathway for students to do an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, and a master's degree in five years. So it can save them upwards of $40,000 and about put it cut in half their student debt by completing this in five years. It's a tremendous opportunity. We have some, a small amount of funding from the Kellogg Foundation to make this happen. Um, and CNM's been our partner in making this work. Our goals for a three-year grant process were to have 100 students enrolled in this program. And at the completion of our first year, which was on April 1st, we have 91 students enrolled. So we're doing our best to make this, this happen. Our internship program has been very successful. We've developed a way for students from any major to earn credit for, um, for doing an internship. We have these internship fairs here that are very low key. So startup companies or smaller companies that maybe can't afford to pay someone 
can get a student to come work for them for 100 hours and we give them three credits. Um, we work with the uh, Disney College program is under our, our umbrella. So students can go work for the Walt Disney Company at Disney World or Disneyland for a semester and get a Fortune 500 company on their resume, which is not something that's very easy to do here in New Mexico. So we have lots of exciting things going on. We have a great team working with us here. Um, all of the folks in the building are exciting to, to work with. Uh, I think everyone here would agree that you know, our work is fun and what we do is great, but what's really exciting are the new young people and the students that come in and talk about their new ideas and that we're able to help and move along to become the next generation of this stuff. So I wanna take a couple of minutes here and introduce you to who's actually the first ever Innovation Academy student. Uh, so Kyle Gwynn, come on up here, Kyle. He's gonna give his little spiel for you, but Kyle is from Aztec, New Mexico. Uh, and he has two of those 36 companies that are up and running, and he's been very successful. He's our poster child, if we had a poster. Um, but uh, Kyle's got a really great story, and he has two companies that are up and running right now. He has two companies. He works for us part-time. He's going to school. He lives upstairs. He's such a good entrepreneur, he was able to talk UNM Housing into giving him his apartment for free. So I'll let Ty Kyle give you his spiel. Well, I'm a bit of a problem solver, and um, I was going to try to solve this problem for Rob with the clicker. Um, yeah, there it is. Yeah, you usually just uh, have to turn it on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, my name is Kyle Gwynn. Uh, I'm a junior here at the university. I'm studying business innovation um, through the Liberal Arts and Integrative Studies College, which Rob is also in charge of, a man of many hats. Um, but, you know, my, my career with Innovation Academy started way back whenever I was a senior in high school. So I heard about the program and I was like, that is exactly what I want to do. I want to be an entrepreneur. You know, I want to start my own businesses. I want to live that super cool life. Um, so I made my mom drive me down here to attend the first Innovation Academy meeting um, where I was the first uh, student to ever sign up for Innovation Academy. So I'm pretty proud of that title. <laughs> Um, and that was kind of my place, you know, my first couple years in college, you know, it's difficult for anyone. And in those two years, I was, you know, I had the Innovation Academy, you know, some kids have their athletics, some kids have Greek life, um, some kids have intramural sports. My place was Innovation Academy. And uh, whenever I found that place, that's whenever I really started to thrive. Um, I started taking advantage of all of the amazing resources they have. And that led to my first company, which is called Pencil In. And pretty much what we do is we make computer vision um, software available for both uh, the everyday consumer and um, small enterprise. So the first uh, product that we put out on the market was called, a, well, it's Pencil In. Um, it's on the iOS App Store. And essentially what it allows you to do is photograph any calendar, schedule, um, date and an event flyer and then it takes all of that and then automatically enters it into your calendar for you and you know as a student we get our course schedules which has you know 32 to 48 very important dates on it that are critical to our success within that class you know and entering five of those in for each one of your classes would usually take you 15 minutes per schedule so now you're just able to photograph it and it takes about 15 seconds so um, we recently went through the i -Corp program that Rob mentioned, and we found a use case for this within um, a small enterprise. So we're using uh, computer vision, and we're attaching it to a very simple user interface, allowing companies to train computer vision to see what they want it to see and store the information where they want to store it without actually having any prior coding knowledge. So you're able to create inventory systems for your business, um, where you're able to create uh, one of the interesting use cases we found is a photo sorting system. So a wedding photographer takes a thousand photos, sorts out of all the photos with the eyes closed, or sorts out the photos with just the bride. Um, so, and I don't know if, if any of you have ever had experience in trying to start a tech company at the age of 20, but it's a little bit difficult to get funding. Um, so. <laughs> We went through that first, uh, we did the um, Innovation Academy pitch contest three times, won it all three times, three for three, baby. Um, I don't think I'm no, I think I'm no longer allowed to do that, so <laughs> I have to start seeking alternative funding. Um, but now we're going after the $50,000 iCorp grant and uh, we're hoping to get that. So, but like I was saying, it's hard to create a sustainable business model with a tech company without money. Um, so I needed, a, I needed a business to put a little bit of spending money in my pockets. 
So that's whenever I decided to found a company called Shutter Bombs. And pretty much we took a smoke bomb and we s said, okay, instead of using this for, for, for paintball and tactical use, photographers, use it in your photos. And they absolutely love it. Um, so we just took Smoke Bomb, branded it, marketed it to, towards uh, photographers, videographers, content creators, and it's created a sensation on the web. They are everywhere. Um, average, we do about 200 to $400 in revenue a day, which is insane to me. So um, that's kind of my cash flow business, but it, it's all you know accredited to the Innovation Academy. They've been there since me, since literally day one, since the day I stepped my foot into the university. I couldn't be there, be where I'm at today without their help, without their resources that they have, without the iCorp site, without the pitch contest. Um, we also, Rob didn't mention it, but we also have classes where we're able to get credit for working on our businesses. And if it wasn't for that, you know, there's no way I, I could be where I'm at today. And also I want to throw STC in there because STC has been a huge part of my success too. They've given me amazing opportunities um, and they also allow me to uh, have an office over on their side of the building and uh, eat their food. Um, I don't know if you know this, Lisa, but I'm always dipping into the cookie stash in the kitchen. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, so, yeah, but, you know, I'm a product of this building and uh, it's producing results and I'm really excited to see where else we can take it from here. So Kyle is, is one of our big success stories and we love him and he's great and he lives upstairs and does all kinds of stuff. So we can he's never too far away. So you can see what we're doing here. You can see the collaborations and the partnerships, but we really want to get you guys out and about seeing what's really going on here and, and getting into the spaces and seeing what's going on. Uh, so I'm obviously available for questions. Uh, the Innovation Academy staff, who is awesome and tireless, is, is here as well. Uh, we got folks from STC, we have folks from General Atomics, from Sandia, and from Air Force Research Lab. So I think that is it for me. Do I need to split them up into groups, or are we? Okay. Oh, we've got the paddles here. All right, Kaylin's got group one. Group three is back there. All right, so enjoy your time here. Be sure to ask lots of questions. Thank you, guys.